Have you ever wondered where the milk for your cereal or your glass of milk comes from? Do you know what animal produces most of the milk we drink? That's right, a cow, a dairy cow. Hi everybody, my name is Emer, and today I'm going to bring you on a behind the scenes tour of Chagas Moor Park Research Centre. Today we're going to find out what dairy cows get up to every single day. We asked some local children, just like you, to send us in some pictures and some questions. We can't wait to hear what they have to say. Can you name any other dairy products? Milk. Yogurts. <laughs> Ice cream and cheese. <laughs> wait a second, who's that? Oh. It's Calf 983. She's very friendly and loves to have her nose rubbed. Oh, and here's one of the scientists who works with her, Fanula. Fanula loves cows. Today, she gets to work with cows every day doing scientific research all about them. We'll come back to Fanula in a little bit. Let's see what your first question is. How many different types of cows are there in Ireland? Hi, I'm Sinead. There are two main types of cows in Ireland. Dairy cows are really good at making milk and beef cows are really good at making meat. When you look into a field, you probably see lots of different colours, shapes and sizes of cows. And that's because, just like we have lots of different dog breeds in Ireland, we have lots of different cow breeds as well. The black and white cows, they're called Holstein Frisians and are really good at making milk. And you might see some small little black cows. These are probably Angus cows and these are really good at making meat for your dinner. So did you know that for a cow to make milk, she must first have a calf? A calf is the name for a baby cow. Cows usually have their calves after nine months in the springtime. When the calf is born, the mother cow starts to make milk to feed her calf. She makes a lot more milk than she needs for one calf. This is why we get to enjoy the extra milk. How big is the calf? Hi, I'm Fanula. When a calf is born, it weighs between 26 to 38 kg. That's about 26 to 38 bags of sugar. Female calves are called heifers and they grow into the large cows you see in the field. This calf was this height when she was born and now she's over a meter tall. Calves can stand and walk for an hour after birth. They will moo to let us know that they are really hungry. The first milk a calf will drink is called colostrum. Colostrum has many important things in it to help the calf grow big and strong. It is slightly more yellow in colour than the milk we drink normally. Do you know all the cows' names? Hello, my name is Katie. Farmers don't always know all of their cows' names off by heart, but they usually know most of them. Every cow has an ear tag with a different number. These tags are like earrings for cows. The farmer usually knows the cow by the last four digits on this ear tag. All numbers on the ear tag have a special meaning. 372 means that the animal was born in Ireland. 22, which tells us that the animal is a cow. Next is the number for the farm where the cow was born. After that, we have what is known as the check digit. The last number will be different for every cow in the herd. This number is a cow's version of a name. So no matter where in the world the cow might go, she can be traced back to where she came from through the numbers on her tag. A cow has to have a tag, but sometimes farmers or their families might give some of their cows names too. This is my favourite cow, Pretty Polly. I think she is the prettiest cow in the herd. Monty got her name because she is a breed of cow known as Montbelliard. They are easily spotted by their white face. This girl is called the boss on her farm because she is always the first cow into the milking parlour every morning and evening. How much milk does a cow make every day? Hello everyone, my name is Michael. So all around Ireland, we have cows that are producing on average between 20 to 25 litres of milk, just like the ones we have here in this field. So that's 10 to 12 of these milk cartons that are in my hand. Some cows are even producing up to 40 litres of milk. So next time you see cows grazing in the field, just remember, they might be the very ones that produce the milk that was in your cereal this morning. And that milk is full of essential nutrients that is excellent for humans. Why can't humans eat grass? Hi, I'm Chris. Great question. 
So there are three main reasons why cows can eat grass and we can't. Cows have a special teeth that help break the grass down into smaller pieces. This makes it easier for the cow's stomach to digest the grass. A cow chews her food twice. First, she takes big bites and swallows it. The grass then comes back up into her mouth again. She chews it more and makes it into even smaller pieces before swallowing it. Cows and humans have very different stomachs. A cow has four parts in her stomach. This allows her to digest grass to give her energy. One of the parts is called the rumen. The rumen is very big, which means grass can stay there for a long time. In the rumen, there are lots of good bacteria. These good bacteria help break down the grass, which gives the cow a lot of energy. Our stomachs don't have these bacteria. How do you know if a cow is healthy? Hi, I'm Neve and I'm a vet. I know a cow is healthy if she's eating and drinking well and has a nice shiny coat. Cows are very curious animals. They like to see what's going on around the farm, often coming up to see and smell you, just like 933. That's a sign that they're happy and healthy. Cows can sometimes get sick, just like us. They can get colds and upset stomachs. Cows are herd animals. They like to stay together, eating and resting as a group. If a cow is lying down on her own, away from the rest of the group, the farmer knows he needs to check and make sure that she's okay. Why is milk white if cows eat green grass? Another great question. When cows eat grass, it passes through the four parts of their stomach to be broken down into smaller pieces. By the time it gets to the fourth part, it doesn't look anything like grass anymore. It is broken down into tiny pieces called nutrients. Milk is made in the cow's udder. The nutrients travel from the stomach into the blood and into their udder where milk is made. The udder uses the nutrients to help make milk, which is white. How do you know what is in the milk? Hi, I'm Mark. So there are lots of different ways to find out what's in the milk you have. So one way to do this is to spin the milk around really fast in circles using this machine. So this separates out each part of the milk, with the lightest parts going to the top and the heavier parts going to the bottom. And the quicker we spin the milk around in circles, the more they'll separate. So this is actually one of the steps in making butter. After we separate the fat, we spin it around really fast in circles so that all the fat sticks together and forms butter. Milk has a type of sugar in it called lactose. So one of the ways to find out how much lactose is in milk is to add the milk into a narrow tube like this. The lactose will want to stay in the pipe while the rest of the milk will want to get out as quickly as it can. Eventually, the lactose will come out and then we can find out how much there is. We can find out how much water is in the milk by putting the milk in a small tray in the oven. Because the oven is so hot, it boils the milk, changing the water into steam, and anything that isn't water will be left over on the tray for us to measure. We also have a much quicker way of finding out what's in the milk. There's an instrument in our lab which shines a laser through the milk. So the laser bounces off all the different parts of milk and comes back a different colour depending on what's in it. We're able to understand these colours and tell what's in the milk. Cool, right? Wow, milk really is so cool, isn't it? Well, that's the end of our tour today. We hope you learned lots about cows. We really enjoyed hearing your questions, and remember, scientists love asking questions. So if you want to be a scientist when you grow up, keep asking questions. Yeah.